supercar. It travels on land or roams the skies through the heavens' stormy rage. It's Mercury Man and everyone cries. It's the marvel of the age. Supercar. Supercar. Jerry Anderson's Immortal Series celebrates its 30th anniversary. Have you nothing to say about that? That's a very sound idea. This groundbreaking series is as fascinating today as when it first appeared. Most satisfactory. Yeah, I think so too, Dr. Baker. Fearless aeronaut Mike Mercury pilots the supercar to the ends of the Earth. Gee, I sure am excited. And what are we waiting for? In a never-ending search for adventure. Okay, fire one. Whether in the air. Be careful, Mike. Or under the sea. Is that where he is, Professor? It's supercar. Space 1999, Jerry Anderson's pioneering sci-fi adventure returns in its entirety. The stars of Mission Impossible are back. I'm Martin Landau. I'm Barbara Bain. Facing incredible odds when a disastrous accident blows Earth's moon out of orbit in Space 1999. We have a total emergency on our hands. Together with other survivors of Alpha Colony, they confront new challenges. You most certainly will die with the rest. And face new dangers. Where the wrong decision could threaten their survival. I've got a life and death medical problem here. Join them as they encounter strange alien beings. I think it's trying to communicate. An unpredictable voyage through the unknown reaches of space. We're out of control. In the futuristic science fiction series, Space 1999. <laughs> William Tell. Every generation knows him. What are you talking about? Audiences of all ages enjoy him. My name is William Tell. This is the bear. He is a champion of justice. Agreed. Defender of the weak. You're right. And the enemy of evil. Certainly. This unique television series... William Tell. ...follows the exploits of a legendary hero. As he confronts an ever-changing array of enemies... Something's got to be done. Be part of the adventure. Yes, the sooner the better. With William Tell. The Adventures of Robin Hood. Richard Green was the man who inspired them all. In the realm of legend, there is only one Robin Hood. He's as handsome as Apollo. And in this memorable series, he and his merry men come alive. No guest has ever complained of our victuals. Each episode takes you back to a noble era. I hope we're in time. When the good of one man gave hope to the many. Take up the grudge that he'd be there if you need him. Join in the brave exploits of the most famous outlaw of all time. There he is! As they rob from the rich and give to the poor. Only one person could be behind this. Staying one step ahead of the cunning sheriff of Nottingham. He sounds quite an irritable sort, that sheriff. Richard Green brings the legend to life. Robin Hood, I don't know how to thank you. In the adventures of Robin Hood. Protectors. Robert Vaughan, star of The Man from Uncle. This is Harry Rue. And Nairi Dawn Porter. Okay, now what's this about Harry? Are members of The Protectors, an international organization of detectives. Terrific. Anything else? Their mission is to protect those in peril wherever they may be. Shut up and listen. I'll tell you what to do. No matter what the risk, each episode sizzles with intrigue and suspense. Robert Vaughan and Nairi Dawn Porter are the protectors. Okay, Venus? Okay, Steve. Right. Let's go.
Friday, send out a general alert. This is an emergency. Yes, sir. World Space Patrol Headquarters, Space City, calling all Earth tracking stations. Emergency. Priority one, stand by. Repeat, stand by. Canaveral, Roger. Woomera rocket range, standing by. Okinawa, standing by. Yadro Banks, What do you make by. of it, sir? As I feared, Lieutenant 90, a missile. And according to the computer, it's carrying a planatomic bomb. Which is powerful enough to destroy the whole Earth. <laughs> Check the exact position of the missile, then instruct one of our spaceships to intercept. Let's see. Sector 25. That's Fireball XL5, Steve Zodiac. Well, Robert, we're on our way home at last. On our way home. On our way home. On our way home. Gee, I keep forgetting. You're only a robot. Say, Venus. How's our beautiful doctor of space medicine? I gather by the compliments, Steve, you want something to eat. I'm preparing a meal right now. I just adore your French cooking. What's on the menu today? Blue pills, pink pills, or those delicious capsules that you make up? Boy, will I be glad to get back to Earth to have a steak. Calling Navigation Bay. Say, Professor Matic, how are we doing? Are we on schedule? Uh, well, Steve, we are approaching position uh, 15 0 blue. And I'm registering minus 14 G from the moon. 14 G from the moon? That can only mean one thing. Well, what's that, Professor? <laughs> it's time to eat. <laughs> Say, you gave me a scare. I thought it was something important. Space City to Fireball. Planatomic missile approaching Earth. Position 24 0 red. Intercept. Repeat. Intercept. Go, XL5. Abandon routine procedure. Intercepting enemy missile. Arming all warheads. Awaiting course instructions. Steve, where is the missile heading? According to Space City, it's heading towards Earth. We've got to stop it, Venus. It's carrying a planatomic warhead. A planatomic warhead? Why, Steve, that's a million times more powerful than a hydrogen bomb. That's right. Our only chance is to explode it in space as far away from Earth as possible. Is the professor tracking the missile? Yep. He's getting me a position right now. OK, Steve. I'll go straight away to help him. OK, Venus. Good shooting. Steve, steer 184 is zero blue. Roger. All warheads go. Fire starboard thrusters. Roger. OK, Professor. We're on course. Maximum speed. All right, Steve. I'm switching to radar telescope. Uh, radar telescope, Venus. Radar telescope operating. I've got it. Range 24-25. Steve. We will have to fire the interceptors at maximum range. That way we'll be clear of the radiation when it explodes. Roger, Professor. Prepare forward interceptors. Roger. Fireball XL5 is dead on target. How are we doing, Professor? In range now, Steve. Stand by with interceptor. Standing by. Range 2400. G rate 2. 2400. G rate 2. Master guidance system UHF. Master guidance system UHF. 10 seconds. 10 seconds, Steve. Roger. Standing by to correct course. Six seconds to go. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, and go. What's happened, Professor? The interceptor exploded before it reached the target. It was exploded by radio waves. There must be a crew on board. Yeah, a suicide crew. Interceptor 2. Roger, interceptor 2. Switch on 
on jamming me. Will do, Professor. Ten seconds. He's done it! Nice work, Steve. You okay? Fine, Commander. What now? Steve, our computers have traced the source of the missile to planet 46, sector 25. Looks like it's your baby. Good luck, Steve. Roger. Setting course for planet 46 to investigate. Say, how about some coffee, Venus? I guess we've earned it. I'm glad I've got Robert as a co-pilot. How long, Steve, before we arrive at Planet 46? Oh, quite a few days yet, Venus. I, uh, I suggest we rest all we can. We don't know what's in store for us when we arrive. Say, how about that coffee? Oh, gee, I'm sorry. I'm a tootie. I almost forgot. XL5, this is Space City. According to our calculations, you are now approaching Planet 46. Space City, Roger. Just going into orbit. We'll call you when we've carried out reconnaissance. Here we go. Fire main retros. Okay, Steve. Firing retros. All right, Steve. We're in orbit. Robert is in the rear control center. You are clear to go. Okay, Professor. Venus and I will take a quick look around. If we need any help, we'll call you. I'll be standing by, Steve. Eh, uh, uh, take care of Venus. <laughs> we don't want to lose our doctor of space medicine. Sure thing, Professor. Safety belt fastened? Safety belt fastened. Here we go. <laughs> Do you really think that the missile was launched from this planet? Well, Venus, that's what the computers say. We have no evidence that there's any life on planet 46, although it does have an atmosphere. What worries me, Steve, is that the computers in Space City are very rarely wrong. Sure. That's why we're here. Let's unfasten our safety belts and go out and investigate on our jetmobiles. Ah, good. They've landed safely. See what I mean, Venus? No sign of life. No plants, no water, nothing. Yes, but this could be just a barren part of the planet. No, it's all like this. Professor Maddock has carried out extensive surveys of the planet from space. Gee, this place gives me the creeps. Nothing but rocks and craters. And boy, is it cold. Steve, look, caves. That could be the answer. I'm a tootie. Why didn't I think of that before? Come on, let's go. Look, Steve. Diamonds. 
thousands of diamonds. Looks like we've stumbled on something, Venus. Come on. Venus, stop. Venus, on the other side, look. A door. This can only mean one thing, life. I'm going across, Venus. You stay here. If anything happens, get back to the ship right away and get help, fast. But Steve, Steve. Steve, what's wrong? Forward thrust motors have failed. Must be the heat. My speed has dropped, but I can still make it as long as the hover jets don't stop. Turn back, Steve. It's too late. I've got to keep going now. Steve Zodiac, you appear to have recovered from the effects of the coma ray. What's happened to Venus? Your Earth woman is quite safe for the moment. Where is she? She is out there in the rocket that will be launched against Earth in exactly eight minutes from now. You're bluffing. Am I? Commence launching procedure. Okay. What do you want me to do? Very simple. Instruct your spaceship to land. And if I don't? You will. Fireball XL5. This is Steve Zodiac. Have discovered launching bay and have occupants held as prisoners. Bring her down, Professor. I can't carry them all in Fireball Junior. <laughs> That's boss, Steve. We're on our way. Hey, Robin, landing procedure. Position code 2200. Landing procedure underway. Excellent, Steve Zodiac. Now instruct him to land at position code 220 blue. And your Earth woman will be released. Fireball XL5. This is Steve Zodiac. That's right, Professor. Land at position code 220 blue. But, 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 Steve, I... No questions, Professor. Just do as I say, please. Okay, Steve. Uh, Robert, it changed landing procedure. Blue position code 220 green. Changing landing position to go to 22-0 green. Uh, uh, correction, 
for your word as a subterrane. Silence, Earthman. Proceed with launching. Resuming countdown at minus 40, 39, 38, 37, 36, 35, 34, 33, 32. Robert! Restart the motors. Robert, what's the matter? Are you there? Twelve, eleven, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Zero, ignite. Volt on guidance mechanism. Change guidance frequency. Tapa Hadouya. Tapa Hadouya. Tapa Hadouya. Niko Batava Zoha. Niko Batava Rocket now under control guidance system. Functioning normally. Don't worry, Steve Zodiac. Unlike Earthmen, we do not make mistakes. That's what you think. Good, Robert. We we can't get her out of this without Fireball Junior. What's happened to Steve? XL5 from Steve Zodiac. I'll be with you in a moment, Professor. Once we get the nose cone attached, we'll be able to pull Fireball out of the ash. Hurry, Steve! We're almost completely submerged. Okay, Professor, I'm back. Firing main boosters. All right. Instruct your subterrene to abandon the missile with Venus. Uh, if you don't, we'll be forced to destroy your planet. 
strange bit? This is your subterranean chief speaking. Abandon missile with Earth Woman. Repeat. Abandon missile with Earth Woman. I have passed on your message, but to no avail. The Earth Woman will die anyway. They have no space equipment on board. Here, take this. It's an oxygen pill. It'll enable you to live in space. Okay, Professor, I've taken my oxygen pills. I'm going to bring Venus and the subterrain on board. Uh, take it easy, Steve. Okay, Steve. It, they've ejected. Roger, Professor. Prepare interceptor missile for launch. Message understood. Ignition and go. Well done, Professor. Now, winch us in. Well, Venus, there's Earth. Sure looks better from here than inside that subterranean rocket. Thanks to you, Steve. I guess I know now why they call you the greatest astronaut on Space Patrol. I think you're cute, too. Space Patrol, this is Fireball XL5 returning to base. Mission complete. Over and out. I wish I was a spaceman, the fastest guy alive. I'd fly you around the universe in Fireball XL5. Way out in space together, conquers of the sky. My heart would be a fireball. A fireball Every time I gazed into your starry eyes We'd take the path to Jupiter And maybe very soon We'd cruise along the Milky Way And land upon the moon To a wonderland of stardust We'll zoom our way to Mars My heart would be a fireball Okay, Venus? Okay, Steve. Right. Let's go.